begin and have already begun to look at proposals which were already quite advanced during previous work, uh, because after really the period from 2009 to 2013, where we elected the Constitutional Council and uh, talked about the new constitution in the parliament, there was also a constitutional committee founded in 2013 to talk about specific issues. Uh, three of, uh, two of them actually who were voted on in the national referendum in 2012, natural resources and referendums. Then we also uh, put on the agenda issues concerning transfer of power to international institution and uh, uh, issues concerning the environment, which is obviously closely re related to the national resources question. Now, what we have been doing is we have been talking about these amendments, and we have already begun the work on the chapter on the president and the executive power. The provision on how to amend the constitution has also been talked about and put in process. And in this exercise, we benefit, of course, very much from the important work that has been taking place in Iceland during the last few years. The proposal from the Constitutional Council from 2011, backed by the referendum in 2012, is a reference point for all continuing work. And now, uh, uh, we are also, uh, during this process, listing up, really, uh, amendments in the new constitutional draft from the Constitutional Council. Uh, and comparing it to the current constitution to see really where there are new amendments that are not part of the current constitution. So that's, the, that's a thread through all our work. As stated in the memorandum, which forms the basis of the cooperation between all parties in Parliament, we emphasize the importance of involving the public in this process as much as possible. And this has a direct connection with the theme of this conference. So the minutes of the meetings, just we emphasize transparency, so the minutes of the meetings of the party leaders are available online. We will make use, make use of traditional channels, such as the public consultation web portal, which we opened earlier this year. In addition, we have asked the Social Science Research Institute of the University of Iceland to come up with a proposal on how to carry out an opinion poll regarding constitutional matters, in particular regarding those reform proposals which have been in the public debate for some years. And then we intend to make use of specific polls as we progress in our work. And I think that will, this is quite novel for the political scene in Iceland, to make more use of public consultation. We have been progressing in that direction, for example, by this new hub which we opened earlier this year. Uh, I think all these experiments have actually been an exercise in transparency and in increasing the democratic participation of Icelanders, uh, because in my opinion, what happened, because I was listening to a very good interview with Jón Olafsson and Katrin Oddstöttir uh, this morning, and uh, I think Katrin mentioned that when we faced the crisis in 28, it was an economical crisis, but it was also a social crisis. And we see definitely uh, changes that uh, are not temporary, in my opinion. I think they have come to last. For example, that the increased interest of the public to participate and have influence is a change that wasn't temporary, you know, just during the crisis. That's a change that we will see will have a lasting effect on Iceland. And I think that's a good change. I think that's a very good change for all of us because it also has changed how we work in uh, Parliament. However, I would be... Uh, I would be skipping the important point if I would pretend, stand here and pretend that everybody agrees on what we're doing. The truth is that the progress in 2009 to 2013 created a lot of conflict in Iceland. That conflict wasn't really new because we had seen that conflict in earlier debates on constitutional changes. And what has happened is on the one hand, we have those who want the new constitution as proposed by the Constitutional Council in 2011 to be adopted unchanged. On the other hand, we have a group who prefers very little or even no changes to the existing constitution, uh, which to a large extent dates back uh, to the mid-19th century. And 
We, there have been opinion polls made saying that Icelanders want uh, a new constitution. A uh, majority of Icelanders want that. But still, when we look at the, the fact that how people vote for political parties, the constitutional issue hasn't been on top of the agenda. For, and, you know, we have quite an experience of that because we've had quite a lot of elections in the last few years. So we should really sense <laughs> the issues that are on top of the agenda. So this, this creates a problem. This creates a challenge. Um, we are quite excited to see really what comes out of the opinion poll that we are making now, I'm planning to make, because then we might get a clearer view, because we are planning to ask a lot of different questions on the, uh, what really I, the Icelandic public thinks about separate issues and the whole constitutional process. So I think that might prove a valuable, uh, valuable inspiration for our continuing work. Now, the story of the conflict, in my opinion, has proved very polarizing for this debate. It has been difficult to talk about constitutional issues because everybody is really a traitor in either direction, and you don't get a lot of. You don't get. Uh, it's very e difficult to build anything up if we continue on that way. If we continue to talk about this, that very important issue by pointing our finger at the next person and say, you, you're a traitor because you don't want to do anything, or you're a traitor because you want to produce a collapse by having a completely new constitu constitution. So I don't think we will get anywhere in that. And a lot of po people have pointed their finger at me and said, you're a traitor because you want to go the middle way. And then I just say, OK. That's fine. Point your finger at me. I'm good with that. I've been in Parliament for 10 years, and I can take that. I think my role as a Prime Minister now is to provide a framework for the discussion between the parties. I want to see a strong involvement of the Icelandic public during that process. I want to seek support from the academic community in Iceland. And I think that was one of the things that was lacking uh, during the process 2009 to 13 is that a lot of people from the academic community simply said we're not going into that discussion. We're not going to participate in that discussion. And that was a problem. That was a problem. And I'm very determined to push for a progress in these issues during my term as prime minister. If we manage to finalize the review of our constitution and most importantly agree on numerous important amendments, we will have a better constitution. And I think also that it's an independent goal to get the debate from, uh, from the trenches that it has been stuck in for the last few years. Uh, and I think the final goal is to uh, finish the work on establishing our own constitution for our independent republic, which was postponed in the 1940s when our current constitution was proclaimed. But most importantly, we will have demonstrated to ourselves that we are capable of reaching an agreement on our most fundamental political questions. And I think when we look at the international era, arena right now, I think it's very important for politics in Iceland to show that we can make progress in this issue. When we look at the polarization, whether we look to the West or to the East, we see examples that I don't want to follow. So hopefully, hopefully, politicians in Iceland will show that they can make some progress in this important issue during this term and the next. Even though there will be a new government, I do hope that the politicians will agree that the work won't be finished after this term, but we will continue our work. And I think the politics, politicians and the political scene in Iceland owe it to the public to make progress in uh, this holistic reform of the Constitution. But I also think it's very important for democracy and politics in general in the world to show that politicians can, can actually finish work like this that we started and have been talking about now for many, many years. So I'm going to continue to be optimistic. That's why I'm, I'm still in politics. And I think a conference like this, where we're talking about key issue, which is really the public engagement in this project, 
I think it can prove very valuable for us in politics. I'm looking forward to meeting the experts I'm planning to meet during these days uh, because it is actually a huge, a huge project that we are faced with. Thank you very much.